more time to spend here. Maybe after it's all over. Just give me a minute to calm down, will you? Calming. Calming. <sighs> Shit. A moment longer and those cannibals would have had me over the fire. There's enough creatures out here trying to eat me without people trying it as well. Shit. Shit. That's not something I want to go through again. Hell. You've not got anything to drink, have you? Something to help a man get his head screwed back on? Here. This should help. Ah, that's good. There's something about a near-death experience that makes everything taste golden. You saved me. I mean, you saved my life. And I've learned a lot about Magalan's history. But cannibals? <laughs> I haven't heard of anything like that since the dark days after the comet hit. Most of what we live on in Tavar is from the past. So history is profitable. Interesting, too. You should learn it. What are you doing out here? The Light Beacon. I've always been fascinated by them. They used to be a cry for help. Or a way to give help. Direction. Guidance. I've seen leaders come and go in the fort. And there's only one constant. You have to rely on yourself. So. I look for ruins, visit the beacons, and I find things to earn shards, so I don't need anyone else. You came out here on your own? That wasn't the plan, no. I know these lands better than to come alone. I was traveling with a pair of scrap collectors. They needed a lead. I needed some help. On our way there, we got ambushed by a group of clerics. I didn't want a chance to fight with them. They were much better armed. So I got out of there. What happened to the scrap collectors? They didn't make the same choice. That's the problem with some people of their age. They think every fight is winnable. They think running away is the wrong thing to do. 
Yet, here I am at my age. I just wish I'd had their legs for running. The clerics caught up with me and took me prisoner. I'm here, aren't I? I waited until it was dark and I got out. I guess they thought I was too old to guard. And I got away with their leader's weapon. I think that must have made them angry. Now those clerics are out hunting for me. You can hear their horns. That's why I thought I'd head for the beacon. Get some scrap and get myself back to Tavar. Shards would mean safety. But you know what happened next? Damn Reavers. Life sure is cheap out here. Tell me about Magalan's past. Gladly. What would you like to know? Tell me about Tavar. Well, it might not seem like there's a lot of history here, but this place hasn't always been desert. When the comet hit, it turned this place into the wasteland you see. But not everything was destroyed. Some building complexes, like the fort, survived. Others were buried. When the sand shifts, other buildings appear. And then all the things that were left in them are there for the taking. Not that everything that's buried is good. Logan, the Duke as he's known today, they're sitting on a powder keg. Back before the comet hit, they stored weapons there. Serious, end-of-the-world weapons. And they're still there, somewhere, along with a whole stack of the usual kind. What kind of weapons? I know the history, not the science. I'm no cleric. But these things were supposed to destroy cities. They were supposed to destroy countries. How could they do that? I don't know. Big explosions. Big explosions. And the fort is sitting on top of them. That's why I want shards. I want to be a long way from here if those things ever go off. Tell me about the factions. Well, their recent history. I mean, they only came about after the comet hit. Before that, there were countries and governments. Millions of people organized into groups. Nothing like now. But the comet destroyed all that. There aren't really records from after the comet hit. No one was writing things down. They were just trying to survive. No leaders. All the things they relied on to survive had gone. But it didn't take long for people to form groups to get resources. And it didn't take long for those people to start fighting. All factions think they've got ways to save us. They're all just ways people are trying to survive. So, there are a lot of gaps in your knowledge of history? Well, some. There were more records kept during the Territory Wars. That was once the factions had formed and started fighting each other. I guess as soon as you're a group, you want to start keeping a history of who you are. History becomes more important. Anyway, instead of fighting over one or two tins, the factions started fighting over land. Elix. Resources. Any small factions that were left got absorbed or destroyed. I mean, these people were survivors, so you'd think that's what they'd want, to survive. Instead, there were yet more deaths. There aren't numbers, but I'd guess at least half of those still alive were killed. But that's just a guess. Finally, the people in charge realized the cost was too high, so they formed a council, the Great Council of Magellan, and made a non-aggression treaty. A non-aggression treaty? That doesn't seem to have worked. Well, peace is always fragile. The Berserkers and Clerics have totally different ideas about Helix and technology, for a start. But, after all the deaths, the factions knew they risked their own destruction if they fought anymore. So, the peace lasted, more or less. There are always some hotheads, some isolated clashes over resources. But the leaders brought their people back into line. All the factions rebuilt their lands, worked on their own rules. So, what went wrong? The Alps. They were just a small splinter group. They went up into Zaykor, into the ice, and no groups were interested in that land. They built their strength, and then they invaded. 
The factions were taken completely by surprise. The Albs captured people, land, built their converters before the factions could respond. What happened to the prisoners, the dead? History doesn't speak of that. I've heard enough. At least you did listen. That's not always the case today. What do you know about the Berserkers? They were a group living up in the woods, trying to grow their own food, and they evolved from there. Everyone else was fighting for what was left, but they decided to make something new. It was some guy called Amric that started them. The new guy they have there, Thorold, the Pilgrim, sees himself as some sort of spiritual successor to Amric. He has changed things there. They're pushing out into the world more than they did. The Berserkers used to stay in Edan, mostly. They'd fight to protect their borders, make assaults outside them, and then pull back. Now they're holding ground. It seems the Pilgrim wants to purify all of Edan. They're gonna use their world hearts to change the world. They want to use their magic to turn the clock back and make Magalan what it was. Well, they'll change it. But whether Magalan was ever like they say, that's just a fantasy. How much do you know about the clerics? Secretive lot. They probably know more about history than the others, but they keep it to themselves. But this god they believe in, Kalan. I haven't seen anything anywhere about this god in records from before the comet hit. Why they've created a god and worship technology? Well, I can't understand it. Everything else they do is about knowledge and fact and observation. So why invent a lot of hocus-pocus to go with it? Why did the clerics have so few men? The wars. They put their faith in their fighting machines. But either their prayers weren't answered or they had a technological hitch. They went into battle with the berserkers and their machines shut down. They were defeated. Heavy losses. Those left retreated into Ignadon. Anyone that didn't make it back was cut down by one faction or another. The clerics' numbers never recovered. I guess they must have fixed whatever the problem was with their fighting machines. It's never happened again. Give me the cleric's weapon. Why should I give it to you? I want to give it to Volkmar. And? Do you think that's a good idea? He is only interested in the weapon, not you. Well, okay, then you should have it. But give me a little Alexit for the trade, at least. Then I have something up my sleeve if I ever get into any difficulties again. We help each other out, right? Well, you had a beer for me. So yeah, all right, you can have it. How long are you going to stay here? I think I will get comfortable here. Maybe I'll even get this light tower working. Man needs something to do in life. Is there something you need? No, no, I'm okay. Don't waste your time on my old bones. The only thing I'm interested in is stories. <laughs> and I don't think you are the storytelling type. What do you know about the Elves? Hardly anyone knows anything about them. I mean, other than about their attacks. Maybe I could tell you a story about them? Now I am curious. Do you know why they use Elix? It makes them stronger, of course. Greater strength, lower levels of fatigue, reduced pain. It turns men into fighting machines. And not just physically. Elix keeps them clear thinking. It removes the emotions that could get in the way of orders. So it means no one can argue with orders. It reduces the chances. That's one of the reasons Alps are so successful. They operate together without question. Not all of them. Some operate alone. Then you've heard of the Eluxiters. They rule in Zaycor. They still consume Elix, but they are given a command rule. You mean like Wardek and Kallax? Or Jax? Have you heard of them? Yes. They are names to be feared. Though I had heard that Jax had disappeared. 
So the rumors say. What else do you know about the Alps? That they have as good as or better knowledge of technology than the clerics. That's because you and them have something in common. Me? What have I got in common with Alps? An interest in history. The Alexiters, well, I don't know for sure, but they have found some fragments of old world information. They're using that knowledge. They're interested in the old world? No, not at all. They just want the technology. Interest is... emotional. The past is something that's gone. They want the future. Interesting. Not many people seem to think about what the Alps want. That's all I know. That was very informative. Thank you. You did well. Life goes by too fast to just stand around. Get out there and seize it. 